Our boat will be a 600 footer circa 1906 to 1911. Scale 3.27 equals 100 feet. Overall length 19.65 inches or 19 and 5 8 inches. Beam 2.125 inches or 2 and 1 8 inch. But our balsa stock is 3 30 seconds of an inch thick on each side. So we have to deduct 3 16 inches from the overall bottom cut, thus leaving our base piece being 1.95 or 1 and 15 16 inches wide. The length of the piece, however, is another matter. This is our motor, the Mabuchi RE14, also known as the RE140. It operates on 1 to 3 volts DC and is the perfect size for this type of boat. These are easily found on eBay or in a Google search. They are reliable and inexpensive. Similar but larger motors are the RE280 and the R3. Avoid the flat slot car motors. They're always trouble. Our task is fitting that motor into this stern. From my own experience, I'm telling you to plant it right here. We will build a flat bulkhead to attach to the bottom piece. This will force us to move the propeller from here to here. For hydrodynamics, we'll need to construct what I call a fade. This allows the water to smoothly reach the propeller. The motor's aft bushing will be anchored to this bulkhead. This means we'll be making some open space that we'll use later, trust me. The fade will be 2 and 15 16 inches long, but the actual pieces will be 3 inches exactly. The fade wall will be between 5 eighths and 6 eighths inches tall. Our overall bottom piece will be 18 and 1 eighth inches long. Don't let this early chiseled fade worry you. I'll show you how to disguise it and to make it look really cool. The objective here is to make it workable but great looking. Our RE14 motor comes from the factory with this rust preventative coating that makes it look great, but we need to compromise it. We'll need to solder on it, and that coating can prevent a good connection. Enter the Dremel tool. These motors can make some electronic noise. In order to silence that, we'll need small disk capacitors. Any value will work. The capacitor blocks DC current, but passes AC current. Thus we want to allow the DC power to the motor, but we want to pass the noise, which is AC, to the motor case, rather than broadcasting it over our receiver. Here are the capacitors wound into the cross silence configuration. Now it's time for soldering. Ta-da! I'm going to show you two styles of scratch building a model lake boat. In this episode, we'll do the measuring everything method for all of you OCD rivet counters out there. It will be both fractional and decimal measurements. In the next episode, we'll see the way I really build boats. The ADHD method uses few numeric measurements and as many hacks as humanly possible. Okay, OCDs. We start with one sheet of 332nd balsa stock. The first thing we're going to build is the bottom of the boat. We saw earlier that this part will be 18.125 inches or 18 and 1 8 inch long. We need to measure that out and strike a line. 
As you can see here, I'm learning how difficult it is with the camera running, the tripod in front of me, and my arms wrapped around it. Plus, I can't get my head down to see what you're seeing. I'll be lucky if I don't amputate a fingertip before this video is done. I think I'll probably be doing most of my cuts off camera from now on. Now we have to trim the piece to the proper beam of 1.92 or 1 in 15 sixteenths inches long. Next, we'll cut the fade. As planned, the length of the fade will be 2.92 inches, or 2 and 15 16 inches. Now we have to figure how wide the motor footing will be. We measure the motor case. It's 0.82, or 13 16 but I'm going to call it 0.87, or 7 8 to allow for cutting error. If we take that and deduct it from the overall width of the bottom piece, we get 1 and 7 eighths. We divide that in half and we get about 11 sixteenths. We then measure 11 sixteenths from the outer edge on each side. Those two marks are where our aft cut of the fade will end. If you're brave enough, you can just go and cut the corners off with some of us measure and use a straight edge. What's left is your motor footing. Now we'll make the motor bulkhead. We're going to need a strip of 332 balsa that is 5 8 inches wide for the walls of the fade. So we'll cut the bulkhead from that same strip. Cut the bulkhead piece being about 1 8 inch wider than the motor footing on each side. Next we need to find the true center of the boat's bottom. That should be 0.96 inches or 31 30 seconds of an inch. Draw a line the length of the boat's bottom piece. This will be your keel line. In reality, just do the best you can. As the point of an engineering pencil on soft balsa can make a line wider than 1 32nd of an inch anyway. So don't make yourself crazy. Now line up the bulkhead's center line with your keel line. Holding the motor on the boat's bottom, line up the motor shaft with the bulkhead center line. Apply enough pressure to make a dent in the bulkhead. Now using a 5 64ths drill bit, turn the dent into a hole. Next take the motor and placing the propeller shaft through the hole, again press gently and twist the motor enough so that the aft bushing makes a nice round impression on the bulkhead, like this. Using a fresh and very sharp number 11 X-Acto blade, cut out the circle made by the bushing. This will never be a clean circle. In fact, it'll look pretty gnarly. So, taking a standard wooden pencil, gently drill it into the hole until it looks good. We're not looking to make the hole ourselves. We're looking to just make it round. Now press the motor in and check to see the fit. We'll want to secure the motor to the bulkhead with the capacitors at the top, as seen here. 
A single drop of superglue on each side will secure the motor to the bulkhead. Don't use too much. You'll regret using anything more if you ever have to change the motor. Glue the motor onto the footing. Note, I screwed this up. The bulkhead should drop over the edge of the footing and not be on top. Hey, it was late when I shot this. While it's drying, cut the fade strakes from the same slice of wood that you used for the bulkhead. Then cut that in half. If it's a bit too long, that's actually good. Now take some gloss enamel paint and use it to seal the motor on the inside. Some folks have asked what I do about keeping the water out. The answer is nothing. In fact, some water seepage into that bushing actually lubricates. When you're done sailing for the day, a small squirt of WD-40 will clean out the water. That's what WD stands for. I do not, however, recommend running these motors on salt water, ever. Next, test fit the fade strakes. Some sanding must be used to bevel this edge for a tight fit. This is the most common area of leaks. Tight fit? Glue that puppy. And here's what you got. Now, if you want to see the non-OCD in easy ADHD way, check out the next video. It'll be shorter and a lot of tricks and hacks are involved.